Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I'm excited to bring you this video where I will teach you how to make your own pastel travel journal. And I will also be giving you a step-by-step, real-time, all raw footage of me creating this painting here. I'm going to share with you different ways you can make a travel journal and also ways to protect them. So lots of fun in store in this lesson. And here we go. But first, would you take a moment to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and click the bell icon. That'll notify you of any new videos that I create. If you have enjoyed many of the free lessons that I have here on my YouTube channel, would you consider becoming a patron? It's only $5 a month. It keeps me able to do this, and I am so grateful for all of the support. Plus, you get extra goodies. I've made travel journals from many different types of surfaces. I recently shared this video. I was excited about this Canson XL sand grain. I wanted to mention quickly that in that video, I mentioned it on Amazon. Each pad was $21. Well, because of my subscribers, you guys shared with me that you can find it for about $8 on dickblick.com. When choosing surfaces to make a travel notebook for pastel painting, I love to use books that have a spiral binding. It makes it so much easier just to turn the pages. Now, sometimes I will paint directly on the pages, depending on the type of surface, and I protect the pages with tracing paper, just regular tracing paper. This is a pad I get from Dick Blick, and I cut it to size and adhere it with some artist tape. Now, sometimes I like to make more of a sanded surface. The technique I'll be showing you very soon is one that could be used in a watercolor notebook or even on this Canson XL sand grain which I found was water friendly enough to do this method in this notebook. These are some of the paintings that I did um, recently when I was traveling with my husband and my middle son and his wife. And I think of these as more like studies and fun. You could also make notes on the back of each page as to where you were and what motivated you. And it's just such a nice little thing to have to remember some of your special moments in life. First, I'm going to show you my technique for creating my own sanded surface on this Canson sand grain. Now it's called sand grain, but it's not a sanded surface. It literally just has kind of a texture of sand. So I like to add the clear gesso to give me a little bit more of that textural sanded surface where you can get more layers. But as I so often do, I don't like really working on a white or in this case, a cream colored surface. So I often will just tone my surface one color. Sometimes I'll do an underpainting with the basic big shapes of whatever the subject matter is. But I find this is just so easy. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying down some pastel and I'm liquefying it. Many don't realize that when you wet soft pastels, they become like paint and you can literally paint with them. And while this particular surface isn't really advertised as water friendly, I found it worked for these purposes just fine. I like to, I'm anxious, so I like to blow dry my pages. This blue didn't come out as vibrant as I had hoped, but you'll see me do a, a few other pages. I'll speed up this process um, after I show you it in real time. And the pages can curl a little bit with this process. This will also happen with watercolor paper if you choose that. But I have found that, well, there's one trick you can do. You can actually wet the back of the paper with water and uh, blow it dry and it kind of flattens it out. But I have found that when you close the notebook and keep it closed over time, all of my pages really flatten out quite nicely. And now let's talk about this product, Liquitex Clear Gesso, that has some grit or texture to it. It has little bits of almost like sand in it. And make sure you use the clear gesso and we're gonna coat it on these colored pages. I'm gonna use a foam brush to coat it with, but you could use a paintbrush too. Let me show you very quickly why I use the clear gesso versus regular gesso. Pardon my hands moving. This was from a different video clip and I'm doing a voiceover. So this is the clear and this is the regular gesso. Regular gesso is white and you would just totally cover up all that beautiful color you just laid down. And the regular gesso does not have the sanded texture. I had somebody say they thought it did and I checked it and it does not. 
And now on all of the pages that I have toned with colors I've chosen, I am going to add the clear gesso. I've just put it in a little styrofoam plate to the left of me there, but eventually I started just squeezing it onto all of the pages. So I just kind of rinsed out my foam brush a little bit, squeezed out the water, and I'm just making a smooth application. I do some horizontal strokes and then I do some vertical strokes. I just make sure I get a decent coating on it. I've had people ask me if doing one coat, letting it dry, and doing a second coat of clear gesso gives you more texture. And I've tried that maybe slightly, but again, for these purposes, these notebooks are for travel and fun and really just expressing myself and maybe creating a special moment while I'm on a trip. So one coat is just fine. And I'll be starting the all real time, all raw footage with no voiceover uh, of me painting. But first, I'm just showing you some of the other colors that I, I did. And that's where I was just squeezing the gesso right on the pages. Now you'll be, you'll see it, see how it curls up in fast motion there? So I tape it down. And um, when I'm finished, I tape my notebook closed. And like I said, once it's dried and flattened out, it pretty much stays flat. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory. I was literally doing this minutes before we were scheduled to leave to go on this little camping trip with my, my son and his wife. My husband was in the shower and when he's ready to go, he's ready to go. So I was frantically packing up my supplies. I took a few pastel sets that I just taped up so they wouldn't open. And I also wanted to recommend, I like this little bamboo holder. I got it from Ikea and it's called Vivala, V-I-V-A-L-L-A. -A. And it's just such a versatile little bamboo stand. I use it for my iPad, like you can see here. I use it just to sit on the counter, but it's also neat that you can hang it over um, like a bar in this kitchen. You can hang it over your easel, you know, like your backing board and it's just so versatile the great thing is it's very affordable look at that it's only $12.99 and I will use this little stand with a piece of foam core board as a support um, for my painting surface I also will take my iPad and now I'm packing up a few more pastels I was like I don't have enough pinks and purples and some of those little new pastels for fine grasses so I literally just wrapped them up in a paper towel really snugly and then I taped them up with uh, artist tape that's the first time I ever tried this. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you were going on a long trip or whatever, but we were just going in our little conversion van, and I knew I could keep my bag really safe. And by the way, I did get everything ready by the time my husband was ready to go. But now I'm going to give you the raw, real footage of a painting that I did prior to leaving. I was testing this method out, and it worked great. For the rest of this, I'm only speeding up this section so you guys don't have to watch me do the whole process again. I don't know why. I just thought a purple underpainting would be nice. You can see there how it curled. I wet the back and see how it flattened out. Now I'm adding the gesso and I'm ready to go. So enjoy this real time, very raw painting demonstration. All right, so there's not much to this composition. Let me get a uh, charcoal pencil to uh, just give you an idea. This is just a, a light Derwent charcoal pencil. I like using charcoal because it's similar to the pastel product. And you know what? I've been liking recently to um, mark me off a little area rather than going to the, the edges. And this is a, a nice um, wide landscape. So I'm just gonna go like to here on the edges and, and like right about in here, how about that? Okay, so we've got about a third of the way down, that's gonna bother me. Um, about a third of the way down is the horizon line. Uh, yep, pretty much that, okay. And we've got a nice, I love this flower peeking up here, but it's a little too much in the center. I gotta figure out a better spot for that. I think I'll put that right there. I've got a tree line back here, and I find that tree lines, I don't like them rounded. I like them a little more geometrical. Now I'm gonna cover this up with pastel. It looks like we've got some trees that are a little closer here. I also like giving levels. This is gonna be my trees that are closest, okay? Um, the next one are, they're further away. They don't necessarily have to be lighter. Often that's a little technique or strategy. I don't want them the same shape as this, so let's do something a little different, okay? And then um, 
let's do, let's give a little gap. I always like to have a little gap and um, sometimes have the trees leaning in. And then we've got some that are really maybe further away back there, sneaking behind there. We might have a little bit going on back there too. Okay, so there's our, there's our trees. This is already feeling really great. And you know, really the rest is all just putting in some big shakes. Oh, I'm thinking this is going to do quite well because I've done this with the gesso before. And look, this paper did great with the gesso. It's really nice. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna go, I just grabbed a couple of sets. This is the Sennelier 40 half stick set. This is the Jack Richardson landscape set. And I see the darkest dark that I have in this. Uh, well, this one has black and a really dark green. I don't normally like using black, although I did in the last, um, on, this, on the gray paper of this, I limited myself to just a few pastels and I was forced to use black and it came out okay. So I think I'm gonna use this for the tree line and it's often good, you know, I might tape that down so that I'm not wrestling with it the whole time. I have my artist tape here and I hope I have this in the frame. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. That's one thing that you have to do when you're making videos. You have to make sure people can see what you're doing. And I have done it the wrong way so many times. All right, that should help that right there. I'll keep it nice and taut. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just getting, I'm not even worrying about getting these in perfectly because I'm gonna come back later with the um, with the sky and I'm gonna carve the, the shapes into the trees. So there's a few trees right there. That's all we need. And then I've got my other, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. I'm not pressing quite as hard. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in and I'm gonna give them um, different values to make them look further away um, later. Now I'm gonna get this in here. I'm kind of lifting up on my pastel a little bit so that it's not getting the whole thing, but it's okay if some of it gets um, on the paper. And then we've got some distant trees back in here. I'm gonna sneak some in here and maybe here to look further away. I think I'm gonna raise these up a little bit too so they're just going out of the frame there, okay? So now I think I'm gonna get in a base of stuff before I um, get on any color. We've got some, this foreground area is really light green and I like that. I have a tendency to go too dark. So I'm gonna just be very gentle. I'm looking, there are some darks in the grasses back here. I like to lay down the darks first. Um, it gives me a little guide, a little roadmap, a little value study to go by, and then I can add in the other colors. I, I wanna keep, when I work on this paper, I wanna try to keep things very fast, um, very simple, and very loose. I also have a tendency to overwork things a lot, so <laughs> we're just gonna keep it simple. All right, so now I've recently been enjoying using the Pan Pastel blending tools. I I love the people at Pan Pastels. Um, they have been so nice to give me some supplies. I've done a video or two on their products. Um, I need to do more. I just forget to break them out, but they're really great. But these are the little blending tools, and I often forget how nicely these blend. Look at that. It just gives such a soft look. Now, I can come back and um, reestablish some of these darks. Look how this blue is looking on top of this lavender color oh my goodness isn't that gorgeous and um again i'm just now i'm gonna just dab 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 little tree shapes gosh i sound like bob ross right now don't i tree shapes little tree happy little trees and uh, again i wanted this a little different shape kind of coming in and then we'll sneak those in with some different values back there so there we've got some tree shapes and now i can go ahead and start blending in some of these dark shapes in here we're just kind of giving an idea of these grasses. I've got some really light greens that are gonna be in here. I normally like to do a little bit of a, a trail. I'm trying to think, um, probably something a little bit like this. I don't want my paintings to always be cliche, so I don't wanna do this all the time, but it's kind of a nice theme. It, it pulls the viewer's eye in to the painting and um, helps to establish a, a strong composition. So there we go, there's that. And um, maybe a little bit of, of some little grass. I use this often when I'm blending and I've got just a little bit left on my um, whatever tool I'm using. This is the nice area for light right there. I, I go ahead and use it to my advantage 
and sneak it in in some other places. All right, so there we go. And I will lighten this up. I think I do want to add a little bit more of that, uh, like this coming around here, a little bit of darker right in here. Right in here. I'm kind of following the photograph here. I like it. It's like it's a little trail that's kind of coming up. Maybe it's just going here. I don't know. Good enough. Now I'm going to get this a little darker here because this is my, my first bank of trees and values are darker in the foreground. Okay. Now that's what I've used. That's all I've used so far. Um, now I think I'm going to go ahead and get in some of these pretty greens. I'm going with local color here. Uh, look at these greens. Oh my goodness. This is the Diane Townsend greens. And uh, man, I love this set. I find these greens are very unique. Um, well, that's a T6, 12 greens. And um, so I'm gonna play with some of these greens to get this in and then I'll work on the sky. Big shapes, right? Nothing hard. This is easy, easy peasy. Uh, I think I wanna get in um, maybe some of these. We're gonna have some greens, deeper grasses that are, um, there's some sneaking in back through here that are uh, darker and um, a little cooler. This one's cooler than this one. You see that? That's a little, it's a little darker, a little cooler. And uh, let's see here. I'm squinting my eyes. Also too, you want to keep your interest not always on the edges. So I'm going to reserve my lights to be um, more in areas that will lead the eye. I'm gonna get my lighter highlights there. There is a lot of light green here. I'm keeping a super light touch here. All right, so there's some of those greens. Just run them along that little path. There we go. And now let's see here. These are, this is an example. I'm gonna kind of lose my trail, but this is an example of grasses that grow really tall. The person who took this photo was way down in the grass. So let's see, that's pretty light, but it's my best choice here. So let's go ahead and go for it. I'm just gonna lay it down. How about that? It's peeking in up and around all of this. Uh, these flowers are so small that I'm not worried about getting them in just yet. I'll start, uh, start adding them in. I'm going to go real light over these uh, background. I like that little lavender showing through. I was kind of second guessing myself, wondering if that lavender was the right choice because there are lavender flowers in it, but um, maybe. Now, I might go ahead and blend a little bit because there's a lot of that lavender showing through. So, let me get uh, right here. Let's do this. I know I think I want to blend back here. I want these grasses now, because I'm working flat, I'm gonna have a lot of this um, um, pastel just kind of sitting on top. I want some of it to be a little flat back here. But I wanted it to soften up and not quite show all of that lavender. I'm gonna have to go, um, see how my, my dark color is getting here? That's because I'm working flat. If you're working on an elevated surface, which is what I prefer, um, then you won't have to worry about that. However, I find my filming is better for you guys when I work flat. So often I have to just go take out my my um, pad or whatever I'm working on. I've recently started attaching my surface to a, a foam core board and um, that makes it easy for me just to take the whole thing out. And, and tap the pastel off of it. All righty, there we go. It does make it a little harder on me, but oh well, it helps you guys, so there you go. All right, so now I gotta take it out, dump it off, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let me taper down, then I'm gonna wipe my hands off. Now, I don't like to do a lot of blending with my fingers, but I don't like all that directional stuff, so I'm just going to soften it up like that. All right, so now I'm going to get some of this dark green here. This is from the Snellier set. Oh, see that? Isn't that pretty? Um, I'm adding. This is my, my trees that are closest. I'm going to probably make those a little further away. 
So I'm just adding some greens in there like that. I'll add some highlights of greens um, to that as well. And I think that's it for that green, other than maybe sneaking in a little bit of it. That is really dark, isn't it? But it's okay, it'll blend in when I um, add some of those uh, other grasses on top. And it's nice and warm. That is such a nice warm green, I like it. Kind of lost my path, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and start uh, getting, this is another green that's really nice. This is um, good for like whatever the, where the sun is. Like I said, I want some sun shining here. So it's gonna kind of catch a little bit on this tree. Let's make this like a little bush down here. It's catching on a little bit. Sometimes you have clumps of branches that are sticking out and they're gonna catch the light and um, deeper ones are going to be darker. So there we go with that. And that was from the Jack Richardson landscape set. Now I want to push these trees back a little bit. So what am I going to do? I'm going to cool it off, lighten it up a bit. This is probably good right here. This is the Diane Townsend greens. I'm going to carve in some more shapes with, um, with the sky holes. But yeah, that definitely pushed those back. Sometimes I like to sneak a little bit back in here, like it's kind of going behind there. That's good. Um, this one, I want to make it a little closer. So let me, let me, let me, let me make it just a little darker here. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. A little darker. I mean, this is st still, no, that's not that. That's a blue. I love that blue. Um, this is the darkest dark blue that I used before. So this one's kind of, this one's closer. All right. It's cooler though. I'm not going to add that much green to it. These rules, I talk about them all the time. Darker values are usually in the foreground. Um, warmer values are in the foreground and things get cooler and lighter as they go back into the distance. Now let's um, let's address that tree right there with a little bit of this cool blue. Maybe just a little bit down in here. Makes it feel further away just, just by cooling it off a little bit. And now we've got some tree. I might put a little bit of this as the highlight on this tree because it's just a little further away than the other one. I need to bring this one down further. It feels like it's at the same level of that. So I'm gonna sneak this in um, down into these grasses a little bit. Ooh, that color is really a pretty blue, isn't it? Okay, now let's add a little bit more of this green and a little bit of areas. Then we'll let the grasses kind of just pop up over everything. Easy. All right, now, what about these trees that are real far away? Well, look at this pretty blue from the Jack Richardson set. It might be a little too light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one here. That was kind of the color of that tree. I'm gonna pretend like um, there's a tree way back there. Let's put one back in here. And then I'm going to push it back. Look at that. There it goes, bye-bye. It's going way back into the distance. I even have a little bit back behind that one somewhere. See that? All of a sudden, you got one, two, three, four levels of trees. All right, now let's see here. I think I really still need kind of a darker green even. This is the one I used on the trees. That's the one that looks so dark there. So let me see. Let's get some of this cooler because, you know, when we have um, uh, grasses buried, they're going to be um, cooler in the shadows. I always say things cool off when it's shady. Um, we cool off when it's shady, so why wouldn't grasses, <laughs> you know, or anything that's in the shade. I'm putting down a little bit more of this in here because I'm gonna layer some of those greens um, on top of it. Pull some of this down. And then I'm gonna layer light greens on top of this with flowers. There we go. And I'm getting also too to where I'm getting a little more pastel dust on here, but that's okay. All right, let me go ahead before I get too crazy and get some of the sky. And this sky is such a pretty blue. It's almost like a periwinkle blue. Um, so I've got a few colors that might work. This is the blue I used for the trees. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in a pie. Uh, colors in a sky are darker in the heavens, 
and then they grow, like think of it as up in space mm -hmm. and then they get lighter as they come down to earth because we got the sun lighting our our earth i'm gonna let some of this purple just peek through look at that i'm liking this underpainting choice and i'm going really light here i'm gonna add some lighter of this but i'm gonna do it just right here i'm, I'm leaving this loose 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 that's what i want you to do if you get this paper force yourself to say this is my loose and impressionistic um, paper choice or pad so that you know that it's, it's mixing with some of that uh, other color making an interesting color. Look at it, it looks minty. That's okay because you know colors, um, they get warmer as they get down to the horizon. So they get lighter and they get warmer. So that's kind of fun. I don't wanna overdo this light because I like the idea of it just um, um, being, isolated, not everywhere. If it's everywhere, it's nowhere. I think the first artist I heard say that was Marla Baguetta. It's everywhere, it's nowhere. Now, it's not gonna look right if I put that light back there. So I'm just gonna sneak some of this back in here. I could even go a little darker, um, like this blue here, because what happens when um, color is behind elements like trees and things, I'm thinking there might be some um, areas where the like the spaces behind the um, trunks of the trees. That's the word I'm looking for. But when light is filtered through things like this, it's the color is going to be a little darker and it's going to be um, a little cooler usually. Like in here. See how that, that color looks better than if I had used this color. Watch what happens here. Look at that. That just doesn't even look natural. So that's not that's no good. So we'll just pop in a little bit of this. I'm squinting my eyes because I'm kind of doing this from uh, imagination. I'm thinking about where there might be some little groupings of things. Just hinting at it. That's good. Um, that's too dark there. But this this one right here, I need a better uh, transition. And I've got a little bit of something on there. A little bit of blue from the tree. All right, so let's get in some of these um, flowers. We got sky, we got earth. And now we need flowers. I've got to put the flowers in now because I'm going to add some grasses and I want to bury those flowers. So let's see what we've got here. I want to get in, oh, this pink is, there are some pinks that bright, but I need to get in some dark flowers. Now, what did I want to do? I want to pop this one up. It is way over the horizon. But like I said, it's right in the middle. I want to make it reaching into the sky. I've already moved my sky up higher. Kind of like right in here. Okay, it's reaching up. And um, we've got a, another few like this. I want to avoid a pattern. I always do that. I end up pattern giving patterns to things. We're going to put one over here. It's going to stay nice and dark. Things usually have this little um, musical, lyrical kind of... Uh, rhythm to flowers and things. Let's make one kind of bigger here. Um, Got to avoid a powder. This one, I need to make it closer. I'm going to make it darker too. And turn your turn your flowers in different directions. There we go. I'm getting a little, little rhythm going there. And I need kind of like a dark purple. Not quite like an eggplant purple, but let's see what I can find. Oh, these purples from the Terry Ludwig dark set. Oh my goodness, they're so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna get some of that in there. When we get darks in, it allows um, there to be um, contrast with the color, color contrast. Okay, so that's from the Terry Ludwig dark. I'm gonna go a little lighter. Maybe this one here. Believe it or not, that's a little lighter. I'm gonna put a little bit here on this one. And then I'll add pink on top of it. Okay, so we've got some other uh, little pink flowers, some of them going off in different directions. Now, I'm going to keep mine that are the, the main focal point kind of in here. And then I'm going to lighten my touch and uh, bring a few of them. They're going to get much lighter over the tops of um, the, uh, the trees there. Now we do have some um, flowers in here that are kind of 
large. They're they're buried though, and they're they've got that fuzzy look like you do with the uh, when you set your aperture on a camera, you make it all fuzzy. Okay, there's that. Now these are going to be a lot lighter, so I don't want to use those anymore. Okay, I want some pinks that are kind of neutral. I want some that are kind of bright, and I want some that are just lighter. And so let's give those a try. So this one right here, I think is going to be good for some of these petals. And um, we don't have to spell everything out with this. I'm losing a little bit of uh, layering ability already, but that's okay. This one I want dark enough because it's, it's contrasting to the sky. Let's put a few more. Now, some of these don't have the dark background because I want them to be second fiddle. <laughs> now, I'm just popping in a few, kind of where I see them. This is my next darkest value. And um, we're going to have maybe a few reaching up here. Maybe one like right there. Now I want to get in some of these that are, they're buried. Like I said, they're so fuzzy and out of focus. We're going to put some grasses over top of them and um, not even worry about them being like flower shapes. I do like, there's a little grouping here. There's open spaces. Um, now let's get this brighter color and let's put some of that in a few areas. Maybe some, yeah, look at that. We've got light hitting kind of the back side of some of these petals. It's like there's some petals in front of these and I don't want this everywhere, but I am gonna use this to pop little flowers kind of growing far away. He's still out there. Okay, now let's lighten this up a bit. We've got some, this is really light, that are just these little light flowers peeking up. Some of them, turn your, I'm turning my pastel to get different um, directions to things. Also too, you can do kind of horizontal strokes. Mm -hmm.
That music was cool, huh? A lot of people ask where I get my music. I get a lot of it from the YouTube audio library. It guarantees that I use music that doesn't have a copyright. So I thought that was really relaxing. I'm adding a few more of the deeper shadows just in little areas. I want to give the feeling of deep grasses. And I love this blue. This I'll often do this towards the end of a painting, I'll find kind of a punchy color for some background trees. We know that things cool off in the distance. And I also like to incorporate it in other areas. Almost always, if I have a color that's um, kind of like a an accent color, I'll find some strategic places to place it so that it makes a harmony for the painting as a whole. And I'm just kind of scumbling it across some of the tops of the other trees. I really enjoyed this experience. This was so relaxing for me. I think that's why I quit talking during part of it. I was just kind of getting into it. Now, these are Prismacolor New Pastels. They're spelled N-U Pastels, not N-E-W. And I like to turn them kind of on their edge. They're nice little rectangular shapes. And I try to give a gestural line. We're talking a lot about gesture in my Patreon group. And I feel that's really one of the keys to having things look artistic. Things in nature are gestural. They have that liveliness to them. I also try to make my strokes for grasses uh, varying direction. You don't want them all in the same direction. And you want them to be broken lines often. Different thicknesses. So keep those things in mind. You try to really avoid things all being very samey, samey. Uh, that's why I was talking about resisting the tendency we have to create patterns that's going to make your art look a little bit more amateurish if all of your flowers have a similar pattern they're positioned the same they're like a pattern distance to, uh, distance apart um, now I'm just adding some of these really my brightest pink I think that bright pink I have um, there's an I think there's another one that might not be in the screen. Anyway, I think it was a Sennelier pastel. Um, they have some really nice bright pinks. Now I'm just getting in some of these pretty pink flowers. I'm lightening things up a bit and I'm keeping my lighter flowers on the tops because that's if the sun is shining up there that's where we're going to get our lightest lights that doesn't mean light flowers can't be buried but they're going to be a little bit darker that's why i switched to this purple you see how that is giving the feeling that they're still maybe light like pink like white light white but they're not quite directly in the sun and that gives a real believability um, when you're creating flower wildflower field landscapes a few more finishing marks I think another neat thing I like about these notebooks is I'm going to paint in them just for enjoyment, not even if I'm traveling, because I find that when you create on a homemade surface or in a dedicated journal like this that's kind of dedicated to relaxation, I find that your work, uh, my work anyway, is more loose and I don't overwork things. I'm more satisfied with just stopping and enjoying that real loose feel. You can always see it with color better when I take a photograph versus the overhead um, camera. So, and again, I did the um, same paper with no clear gesso coating, no color on the background. I used this particular journal because it was a gray tone rather than cream. It's the XL Sand Grain Gray, I think it's called, surface. You definitely don't get as much layering when you work on just the plain paper alone, but I still enjoy this process. So I'll try to have a tutorial of that painting too coming soon. Let me know if you liked this. Let me know also if you liked the raw footage I'm calling it where I'm, I'm not editing it. I'm just talking as I'm painting. And also go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Support me on Patreon if you can. And God bless and happy painting.